Today we'll be looking at Apostle, a movie directed by Gareth Evans, who's most notably known for directing the two raid movies, the first one being about your dodgy neighbour getting raided by the police after siphoning off free electricity from the power lines, and the second one when he does it again. Apostle being an interesting departure from Gareth's film roots in Indonesian filmmaking, with him creating perhaps the best segment ever created in the VHS franchise, Safe Haven. So different in fact that instead of Indonesia, this movie begins with the unfortunate sight of Wales. The year is 1905, everyone's at risk of dying of diarrhoea, and in less than 10 years all of the men will be sent off to die in a war, just as God intended. The story revolves around a drug addicted protagonist Thomas, the best kind of protagonist. His sister has been kidnapped by the evil species known as the Welsh, and has been taken to a remote island inhabited by a cult, with it being up to Thomas to infiltrate them and save his sister without paying, because she's not worth that much. The gothic folk horror tale, in that it's a horror tale with a couple of folks in it, sees Thomas be granted access to the island with another group of newcomers by using a marked pass that was sent with the ransom. He sneakily switches his pass with another man's because good luck mate, and arrives on the island to witness the man being surrounded by a group of angry men for the best night of his life. He arrives in the town of Eriston with his identity hidden, and learns about the local prophet Malcolm that promises to grant you access to the kingdom of heaven if all you do is send him all of your life savings and let him sleep with your wife. At the service being held by Malcolm, he learns that he and the original few came to this island after being cast away from the mainland due to preferring football to rugby. He claims that they were drawn to the island by a goddess, and definitely not his unchecked schizophrenic hallucinations. In those days, that was just called being eccentric. After the service, Malcolm pays a visit to the man originally thought to be Thomas, but after realising that he's not who he thought he was and that there's an intruder on the island somewhere, just like any good priest would do, he cuts his throat to ensure his silence. That night while snooping around in hopes of finding any information about his sister, he witnesses through a window as a woman willingly allows a man to cut her arm and to drain it into a jar, because blood is gross and get it out of me right now. Making a mental note of the village and all of the mental people in it, he comes across Malcolm's house, where he discovers that he's got his very own trap door that leads beneath the ground, causing Thomas to become jealous because all he's got is a crippling drug addiction and not a sister. After returning to his room for the night, he discovers jars of blood lining the hallway as they plan on having a really cool water fight later. So Thomas tips some of his neighbour's jar into his because sharing is caring. Despite attempting to walk away unscathed, he still manages to cut himself as he happens to be an idiot, and and also the key he was given has a spike on it. But not letting that precious blood go to waste, something beneath the floorboards begins licking it up like it's fresh Belle Delphine bathwater. Malcolm emerges through the other end of his trap door deep within the woods that leads him to a mysterious building, otherwise known as a shed. Because every cult leader requires their own hidden shed deep in the woods, for business needs. Thomas catches a young and impressionable man named Jeremy, as he's involved with a forbidden relationship with a woman named Fionn, forbidden because girls are gross. So he uses this as leverage to interrogate him about his missing sister, where he learns that she was kidnapped for ransom due to their crops failing, and them being unable to smuggle food from the mainland, but being perfectly capable of smuggling a woman. Malcolm, aware that an infiltrator is present in the town, decides to bring some of the new men to the church to be tested by having them recite lines from their holy book. Thomas knows that if they get to him, then he'll most definitely be caught for forgetting how to read, but as Malcolm makes it to the man next to Thomas, suddenly he pulls out a knife and lunges at him, as he's an assassin who's been sent by the king to deal with Malcolm for the unfortunate crime of being Welsh. Thomas, still needing information from Malcolm, steps in to stop the man, receiving a slash across the chest, but also earning the trust and respect of Malcolm, as well as this cool new scar. Thomas is sewn back together so all of his beads don't fall out by Malcolm's daughter Andrea, who in the process gives the drug addict more drugs, because she knows how to party. Malcolm decides to parade Thomas's sister through the street in an effort to root out the spy, because there's absolutely nothing worse than watching your sister be given a haircut. At least Thomas seems to be greatly offended by that. Knowing that he needs to act now, the next night while a celebration is underway by Malcolm, giving him the perfect opportunity to search the houses for some blues clues, using the help of Jeremy, Thomas is able to break into the secret passageway beneath Malcolm's house to find what cool stuff he's been keeping down there. Malcolm discovers Thomas's hand-drawn map hidden in his room, and being disgusted by his artistic skills, sends some men to his home. Jeremy's discovered beneath the house being a little bit of a weirdo by Frank his father, but just as he's 
about to give the warm embrace of his fist to his child's face, he decides to let him go before anyone else knows he was here. Frank heads into the passageway after Thomas, while Malcolm waits at the other end, accidentally alerting Thomas to his presence on account of him being a big-footed idiot. Realising that there's someone else coming from behind, Thomas drops down into a pool of foul stagnant water filled with the decaying corpses of animals, just as Frank walks right past him to receive the secret handshake from Malcolm a shotgun blast. Luckily for Frank, Malcolm misses because he's just kinda crap like that, while Thomas, still in the cave system, is greeted by the terrifying sight of an old woman. Gross. While she's offering to cook him a free course meal because he's still a growing boy, Thomas is able to crawl his way through the old woman's tight claustrophobic passage and is about to knock her out with his bone to discover that she didn't follow him because dudes be crazy. Thomas, finding himself in a cave with ancient cave paintings littering the walls depicting the goddess, decides to write Tom was here on the walls as it cuts to a woman hanging out in a bush. It's the goddess of the island, who Malcolm has kept in captivity in order to abuse her power, with what Thomas was seeing, much like my girlfriend, being a manifestation of her as she wasn't actually real. The woman feeds on the blood of animals and humans, explaining the jars of blood, with Malcolm threatening to let her starve unless she produces them a pure harvest. All the while, some guy with his head in a sack just seems to be chilling, as he's only gone and managed to catch himself Thomas's sister in a sack. Andrea discovers Thomas in the cave, realising that he's learnt the island's little secrets and after bringing him fresh clothes because he's kinda stinky, she notices burns up and down his back. He explains that he used to be a man of God once, and he led his parish to China because he heard it was a really tolerant place back then, only for his parishioners to be executed and for him to have a crucifix branded into his back, leading him to lose his faith because God wanted him to have this cool ass tattoo. Meanwhile, Frank insists that it's time for him and Jeremy to leave the island, but due to him putting his dirty little seed in Fion, she's pregnant. So Jeremy convinces her to leave with him, but her father Quinn, Malcolm's right hand man, finds out that she's pregnant and that she's trying to leave him. He's seen what's happened to the livestock that have tried to give birth here recently due to the goddess, and Jeremy walks in to see the sight of his once pregnant partner, now his ex-pregnant ex-partner. She's lying on the floor as Quinn has cut it out of her. Jeremy immediately attacks Quinn with a razor blade given to him by Thomas, despite having as much facial hair as a chemo patient, where he manages to take out a chunk of his neck to keep for later. Quinn, like the excellent father that he is, proceeds to run outside, screaming to everyone that Jeremy has just killed this precious daughter. For the horrific crime of loving someone with daddy issues, Jeremy's caught by the town guards and told that he needs to be purified, before being placed onto a table and held in place with vices. We see as the Ku Klux Klan have unlocked the new Fortnite skin, and Quinn whispers to Jeremy that he's always wanted to do this, before scratching that itchy part on the top of his head for him by slowly drilling a spike into it until his cranium can double as an extra pocket. Malcolm, having hard evidence against Thomas in the form of a doodle, is about to kill him for being the intruder, when suddenly Frank interrupts them all after learning about his son's brains having been turned into a smoothie, as he's going to kill the goddess to put a stop to this. Thomas uses the opportunity to kick this gate really weirdly, and to run off after his sister amongst all of the commotion. After making it to the weird priest shed in the woods, Frank's shot and killed by the bagman as he tells Thomas to burn it all down. So Thomas sneaks through the floor to get access to the building, as an unhinged Quinn shoots Malcolm, because I guess he's just on one. After watching the bagman force feed the woman human remains, Thomas finds a sack of potatoes suspiciously resembling his sister, but is knocked unconscious by the bagman before he could turn her into chips. After he wakes up, his sister is gone, as he's attached to a machine with spikes through his hands and legs, as he's about to be pulled backwards and ran through a grinder, and not in the fun way. His hand is conveniently downsized in the machine, giving him the new opportunity to use his new wanking hand to free his legs. Not wanting the bagman to miss out on all of the fun penetration, he sticks him in the face with one of the spikes and uses a weight to alleviate some of his neck pain in that he snaps it in half. The god of the island being happy to see Thomas here, so much in fact that she can't stop herself from giving him a head massage. In the process, showing him how she was captured by Malcolm and Quinn before being enslaved by them. She asks Thomas to be set free, so in response he sets her on fire. He never was good with women. Something that she apparently is incredibly happy about, as when Thomas leaves to find his sister, he discovers all of the guards impaled high up into the tree branches while the town is burning. Quinn, now in charge and unaware that the goddess is free, plans to keep Andrea and Thomas's sister in captivity and to repeatedly impregnate them every year and feed their babies to the woman of the island. But Thomas, not exactly fond of that idea, stabs Quinn in the chest, resulting in he himself being tickled in the ribs. 
The women use this opportunity to strangle Quinn with their chains, and Thomas grabs the knife at the top of his chest before deciding to air Quinn's insides out. All of them are attempting to flee the island by Frank's boat, when suddenly Thomas collapses to the ground due to his phobia of boats, as he knows he's not going to make it. He manages to convince Andrea and his sister to go on without him, as he lays there dying on his own, when suddenly a still-alive Malcolm appears beside him. Thomas looks down to realise that his blood is giving life to the island, before laying back to die and being reborn as the new god. Before we finish things up, I'd like to just give a massive shout out and a big thank you to all of the YouTube members and patrons, the people who every month continue to go out of their way to support the channel. If you're interested in becoming a YouTube member or a patron yourself, not only are you just generally being a big help, but you also get access to a few little perks, like being able to join the private Discord server, where you can then get links to uncensored versions of all of my videos going forward. Starting off with this week's new YouTube signups, a massive thank you to Helia, Raymond Villasana, M Noise, Aaron Dite 27, Victor Ballon, Lawrence Werdinger, Cody Harper, Not Celery, Scythe 877 Gaming, Mia, Alex Prodi, Nebs, Lumen LP, Marcel Slabek, Zane Munro, Band and Jice Blend, Putt Putt, Your Mate Sonic, Sean Cicillano, Mudslayer 04, The Games Kill Count and Iris Fan, Laurie Iconen, Jim Bob, Juno Mahaffey, Nubman 3131, Luke War 312, Edwin, Elizabeth, Stephen Petty, Alin Askea, Dr. Led vs. Braze, Viltrong, Daniel Keelan, Voidza, Streamer Beamer, and The Soldier 420. Moving over to this week's new Patreon signups, massive thank you to Poalo Rozo, Purinut, Helia, Blimby9, Asoxy, Rasmus Flittenborg, Riley WA, Chonky Chief, Edtin, Mr. Rogers, Faith Imran, Lizard, La, Not Name ED, Shadow, Bryce Love, Juan Gray, Patrick Payne, Riley William Ahen, Ricardo, Zhao Jiang, Javier, Sarah Bean, Luck Brown, Matthew Fingers, Gary Sears, Alex, Mr. Dan, Pig Miami, Sam, Ty Pinkney, Haydo Potato, Dominic Martin, Marfis Hardy, Avrek, Bryce, Skip, God, Marcia Brown, Orcadian FC, Sudsy Rat, Jay Moore, Crunt Fan, Matt, Jack Gray, Eric Denault, Peter Bridge, Josh, Good Fairy Ben, Woodcast Rain Steel, Larsian, Ronnie Wabals Jr., Quick Bat, It's Your Scooter Kid, Streamer Beamer, Larry Davis, Odiesel, Juvenile, Corey Stevens, Samuel Virgo, Christopher Webb, Christine Pickles, Dominic Lange, and Mason. So once again, a massive shout out to all of the YouTube members and patrons, and a big thank you to everyone else for watching.